What's up, gang? My name is Jaron R.M. Johnson. And I'm Adam Buffoni, and today we're going to be talking to you about Goblin Cave. Ooh, what's Goblin Cave? That is a great question. Goblin Cave is an asymmetrical, team-based tactics game featuring strategic, card-based combat driven by unique character abilities and player decisions. A group of adventurers will traverse a goblin's cave in order to steal relics, and the goblins must defend their home. Each player will take control of two unique characters, drawing ability cards, and moving around the board. Well, that does sound cool, but how exactly is Goblin Cave played? Well, today we'll be showing you how Goblin Cave is played virtually in Tabletop Simulator in a one versus one scenario. So I'll be playing the Goblin team, and the characters that I've chosen are Fina Fizzed, the Goblin Archer, who can pose a threat to enemies from a distance with powerful attacks, and Lyra Willow, the Goblin Mystic, who can control the battlefield with high utility spells. And I will be playing the Adventurers. I chose Autumn, the Human Warrior. She can deal high damage in close quarters. And Hamer, the Elf Priest, who can keep his allies safe with buffs and healing spells. As the Adventurers, I'm sneaking into the Goblin Cave to try and steal these relics. And Adam, playing the Goblins, will be trying to do everything he can to stop me. I sure will. So here I've placed Fina within range of the adventurers so that she can reach them with her attacks when she needs to, and Lyra I've placed just out of the way of danger but close enough to support with the right spell when the time comes. My plan is to try and get in there as fast as possible and hit as hard as I can, so I've placed my characters as far forward and towards the center of the map as I can. Each character has their own deck of ability cards, and during a turn I'll get to play one ability for each character. Before I do that, I'm going to roll for movement. Now that I've rolled for movement, I will assign each die to a character. This die represents how many spaces that character can move. Unlike... Oh, nope. Goblin Cave uses a modified d6 for things like movement and damage, so instead of a standard 1 through 6 spread, Goblin Cave's dice have faces 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6. This helps to keep the average roll much closer to center, while still allowing for satisfying high rolls and devastating low rolls. I've given Autumn three spaces of movement and Hammer five spaces of movement. So during your turn, you can move your characters and play abilities in any order you'd like. You could even use a portion of a character's movement, use one of their abilities, and then continue their movement. Now that I've assigned my movement values, I can start moving my characters and playing their ability cards. Each ability card has two abilities, as you can see in Jaren's hand. Jaren will have to choose which ability to play, the other ability on that card isn't used, and the card is discarded. That means every time you play an ability card, you must make a tactical decision about which to choose. The ability cards come in three tiers of power, Basic, Heroic, and Legendary, with Basic being the simplest abilities and Legendaries being game-changing abilities. I'm going to start by having Hamer use his Arcane Shield ability on Autumn. This gives Autumn the Defend condition with a value of 4. Conditions are various effects that can be inflicted onto characters. Some conditions are positive while others are negative, but all conditions are applied with a numerical value. In this instance, Autumn now has the Defend condition. When a character with the Defend condition would take damage, they can reduce the amount of damage they take by the value of their Defend. So the next time Autumn takes damage, she can negate up to 4 points of that damage. And that's going to be really helpful for me, since the next thing I'm going to do is have Autumn move, and then use her legendary ability Charge. Charge is going to let her move 4 spaces in a straight line, and then deal 2 dice of damage to an enemy that she's next to. So I'll move 1, 2, 3, 4, and deal 2 dice of damage to Lyra. Well, that doesn't look very good for me. Unfortunately, Autumn was able to get all the way up to Lyra, who I wanted to keep safe, but at least she had to use one of her legendary cards to do so, which could make her much less of a threat in the late game. Go ahead and do 9 damage to Lyra. Now that both of my characters have used their abilities and all the movement I want them to use, I can end my turn drawing back up to 4 cards for each character. If I had another adventure player on my team, they would take their turn, moving their characters and playing their abilities the same way I did. Since I don't, however, the end of my turn signifies the end of the adventure phase and the beginning of the goblin phase. Ah, uh, but don't forget, at the end of the adventure phase, the round counter is reduced by one. If the round counter reaches zero, then goblin reinforcements show up and the goblins win the game. And if the adventurers can get one of these relics to an exit space before that happens, the adventurers win. So now I can start my turn. Just like Jaren, I'll roll two dice for movement. And they're both three, so both of my characters will be able to move three spaces. I'll start by moving Fina up two spaces, and then I will play my ability Critical Shot, uh, which will deal two dice of damage to Hamer. 
And this is a good example of what sets legendary abilities apart from heroic abilities. Critical Shot dealt two dice of damage like Charge did, but Charge had the added bonus of moving me four spaces forward, which brought me a lot closer to the Relic Room. Mm -hmm. So Hamer's going to take nine points of damage, and now I think I'll use Fina's final space of movement to move back toward the Relic Room so she can defend it. The next thing I'll do is with Lyra, I will use my Wall of Vines ability. This is a spell that allows me to create a wall that occupies three spaces and has eight hit points. So I think I will place my wall on these three spaces here along the bridge. I'm hoping to separate my opponent's two characters. That way it'll be much easier for me to fight Autumn without Hamer there to constantly heal her. So now that will be the end of my turn. And since I'm the only goblin player, the end of the goblin phase. So I'll also redraw until I have a full hand and then Jaren can start the next adventurer phase. Or at least I would, but we're out of time. Uh, if you enjoyed this uh, overview of Goblin Cave, be sure to check out more information in the description below. Thank you so much for checking this out.